Hello there. In this video, let's calculate the center of mass of a uniform cone. In this problem, I have a cone of height h and its base has some radius capital R and we want to find its center of mass. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and put my coordinate system down here, right? Here's my x, y, and z axes, right? And the first thing I just want to point out is that due to the symmetry of this cone, right, it's rotationally symmetric about the z axis right? In other words, it has an equal distribution of mass in the x and the y directions, which means that the center of mass is going to have to lie somewhere on the z axis, right? So the x center of mass, which I'll label capital X, and the y center of mass position, which I'll label capital Y, both of these are going to be equal to zero. All right, so what we're really interested in is just finding the z component of our center of mass here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my cone up with little infinitesimal mass elements, which are going to be these disks with some height, dz, and some radius, which for right now I'm going to call little r, right? And of course, these are going to each be located at some height z above our origin, right? And so each of these little infinitesimal volume elements is going to occupy some volume dv, and they're going to have some infinitesimal mass dm. Okay, with this notation, the center of mass capital Z of this cone is defined as the integral over my cone of z dm divided by integral over my cone of dm. Right, and we can almost immediately simplify this down because this is a uniform cone. Go ahead and watch this, right? We have that dm is going to be equal to, well, how do you find the mass of an infinitesimal mass element? You take your volume density rho times the infinitesimal volume that each of your mass elements is going to occupy, right? So you take your mass density times that volume to give you your infinitesimal mass, right? Right, and so let me go ahead and just plug that in. I'm going to have integral over my cone of z rho dv over integral over my cone rho dv. But rho is just a constant, right? Because we have a uniform cone. So my mass density is going to be constant. So we can simply cancel rho and rho out, and we're left with the following form integral z dv over integral dv, right? And this is all still over my cone, right? And really this is a statement that for a uniform object, your center of mass, right, reduces down to the centroid of your object, which is a purely geometric quantity, right? Notice how we have no dependence on mass or mass density anymore. Now this bottom integral here well, that's just summing up all my volume elements of this cone. That's just the total volume of my cone. And we know the formula for the, for the volume of a cone, right? Let's just go ahead and use that. We take the, uh, the area of the base, right? Which is gonna be pi times capital R squared for our cone times the height of the cone, which is H, all over three, right? Right, and while we're at it, let's go ahead and see what we can say about dV for the time being. So we have these disks, right? And they each occupy a volume dv, but we can write that out in terms of r and dz, right? So each of these guys here, they're going to have the, their, their little cylinders, right? Go ahead and emphasize this in pink here. So the volume that each of these cylinders is gonna occupy, right? We have the base, which is gonna be pi times little r squared, times the height of each of these cylinders, which is going to be dz, right? So this is what our volume element is going to be equal to. The only problem is we still don't really know what r is. I kind of just introduced this little r here, but we don't know exactly what that is. So let's go ahead and figure that out next, right? Clearly, r is going to be somehow dependent on the, on the location z, right? As you move up this cone, r is going to get, continue to get bigger as z gets bigger, right? But let's go ahead and formalize this. And we can do it by using similar triangles. Do you see how I kind of have two triangles here? I have this h and this r, and I have this z and this r, right? So let me go ahead and point out that those are going to be similar triangles, right? So I'm going to have a big triangle 
with legs H and R. And then I'm going to have a little triangle inside of it, right, with legs Z and little r, right? And so when you have similar triangles, the ratio of R over Z here is going to be equal to the ratio of capital R over H, right? And so we can immediately write out from this that R is going to be equal to, you know, capital R over H times Z, right? And again, to be clear, we're plugging in for this little R here. So we're going to have that DV is equal to pi times R over H Z squared DZ, or in other words, pi R squared over H squared Z squared DZ. Great. So now I'm taking this volume element here and I'm going to plug it in for my volume element here. And I'm also going to substitute, you know, this guy down in the denominator. And so what's this going to give us? Let's just go ahead and plug right in, okay? All right, let's go ahead and plug this all in. I'm just going to leave constants outside of my integrals, okay? So I'm going to have pi r squared over h squared integral. I'll think about the boundaries in a second. z cubed dz divided by pi r squared h over 3. Let's go ahead and cancel out these like terms here. Nice. And so this is going to be equal to 3 over h cubed integral of z cubed dz. What are the boundaries of my integral? Oh, right. Well, we just started at the, uh, you know, the tip of the cone, which was z is equal to 0. And we stacked our disks up all the way up to the top of the cone, which was at height h. And so let's go ahead and reduce this integral. This is going to give us... 3h cubed times 1 fourth h to the fourth, right? Or in other words, we're going to have 3 fourths h as our answer. Notice how, even though at the beginning of the problem, I defined this cone as having some radius capital R, right? The, the, the radius of the base of the cone never appears in the final expression. Uh, so it really doesn't matter what the size of this base is relative to the height of the cone. But anyways, there we go. If you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing to the channel. I love to hear about people getting on board. But other than that, thank you so, so much for watching.